How do we calculate the exact distance of a winding path going up a mountain? How can we find the energy lost to friction during the motion of a rocket? How can you figure out the optimal amount of wire for electrical lines? Or how do you find the speed limit for a curved roadway? Up until when we first take calculus, we have been thinking about math in very simple geometric forms. Circles, squares, triangles, rectangles, and so on. This is unrealistic though, as real life problems often do not conform to these perfect structures as our math courses to this point have led us to believe. The questions I posed earlier aren't unrelated. They're all tied together by one key mathematical concept, arc length. Before we go into what arc length is, let's explore what calculus means. Calculus is the mathematics that deals with summing infinitely small sections to find properties of functions. It relies on one key fact. On smooth functions, if you zoom in far enough, the curve that you see will be essentially straight, making it easy to derive mathematical properties. Arc length is a useful calculus tool that we can use to solve problems that deal with finding the exact lengths of various trajectories or curves, or problems which heavily depend on the path. Put simply, it is the length of a smooth curve from point A to point B. In calculus with three variables, this will be dealing with so-called space curves, which are smooth lines that go whichever direction they please in a 3D space. Let's take a look at the graph of this function. From a wider point of view, the exact length of the curve is difficult to calculate. But if we split the curve into tiny sections, we'll get a bunch of tiny lines, and we can sum them up using the fundamentals of calculus. Now for all of you mathematically inclined students, here is how we derive the formula. First, let's start off simple, with lines. The length of a line segment is something you learned in regular geometry. In this case, it's just the distance between two different points on the function. The formula for the length of the line follows from the Pythagorean theorem. Remember, a function is basically made up of a bunch of small lines. Now here's where the calculus comes in. If we model this portion of the function as 100 line segments, we can get a pretty close approximation to the curve. The sum of these lengths would then be fairly representative of the arc length. The equation for this would just be the sum of the lengths, or the sum of the square roots of delta x squared and delta y squared. And since, as we zoom in more and more, the line segments more closely resemble the line, as n approaches infinity, we get a closer approximation to the actual arc length. But this is the same as integrating the length of each infinitely small segment. Each of these segments would go horizontally a distance, dx, and vertically a distance, dy making that length equal to the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. The total length would just be the integral of this between the two bounds. This equation is it. However, it is hard to use. What we can actually do is factor out a dx from inside the square root and take it to the outside. So there is a simpler equation, which is way easier to use. It is the integral of the square root of 1 plus dy over dx squared or the square root of 1 plus the first derivative squared. When extending to three or more variables, arc length's functions can be greatly expanded. With arc length, integration is possible over more complex shapes and lines to describe many more real-world phenomena. Before we dive into all the applications, we must discuss an important concept that aids us in this more complex integration, parameterization. In many cases, it might be obvious that either y depends on x or x depends on y. But sometimes the graphs won't be too nice. There could be graphs that aren't functions or even a third variable might exist.
As things get more complex, we cannot use the same approach as we have gone through. Or at least, it won't be so easy. Parametrization is an incredibly useful tool. By basing all variables off a carefully chosen arbitrary variable, t, we can easily track how all the variables relate to each other through t. As t changes, it affects x, y, and z. Let's say we have a function that takes x, y, and z in as variables. We can, through parametrization, express that as x as a function of t, y as a function of t, and z as a function of t. Now we have three functions which are easier to work with to find arc length. With parametrization now in our tool belt, let's find the arc length in 3D. Just like how a 2D graph can be broken into infinitely small line segments, we can do the same with a 3D graph. The arc length of a graph from one T to the next would just be the length of the segment connecting them. For a single delta t, the length would be the square root of the sum of the squares of delta x, delta y, and delta z. Again, we take smaller and smaller segments to get a closer and closer representation of the graph. So we get an integral. The integrand of our arc length function becomes square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared plus dz dt squared. This is a lot easier to work with, as everything is unified under t. Knowing the formula is only half the story though. It's easy to plug some numbers into the equation and get an answer. However, arc length is important for its multitudes of practical uses. Sure, the obvious one is measuring lengths, but arc length goes much further than its glaring definition. Arc length is closely related to curvature, another multivariable concept. Curvature tells us how sharply a smooth curve turns, a measure of how quickly a curve changes direction. Curvature is the change in direction or the change in the tangent vector over the change in arc length. For example, a circle with a smaller radius will have greater curvature than a circle with a larger radius. This has many applications, especially in civil engineering. The speed limits on roads are largely dependent on how fast the direction of the road changes, so knowing the curvature is extremely important to setting proper speed limits to ensure road safety. Line integrals is another example of where we can put arc length to use. It involves integrating a function over the curve. For a 2D curve, we can think of this as trying to find the area of a curtain with varying heights and directions. Here, arc length allows us to integrate over non-linear intervals. Instead of integrating on a one-dimensional interval from A to B, the length that the function we integrate over does not necessarily have to be straight. Again, this isn't just restricted to the brains of mathematicians. There are a multitude of real-world examples where these line integrals are absolutely fundamental. For example, while launching a rocket into space, disregarding air resistance makes the calculations easy, but scientists will have to factor in air resistance because we don't live in a perfect world. Finding air resistance depends on a line integral and the path taken. We could also calculate the center of mass of a wire as well as its rotational inertia and electromagnetic properties. Line integrals are fundamental to major electromagnetic laws. Arc length helps us integrate over intervals that are not just one dimensional and allows us to precisely calculate whatever we choose for many practical uses. Arc length takes part in advancing our spirit of calculus to obtain a greater understanding of the real world.